Hello everyone! Welcome to another Red Print App Builder video tutorial. It's been a long time since we showed you the very first version of Red Print App Builder. Red Print has come a long way since then. The new version of Red Print is 1.38. In this video, we're going to introduce you to some really cool new features of Red Print App Builder and try to explain how you can use it for your next big app development project. For those who missed the previous videos, Red Print App Builder is a Laravel based app builder that helps you build your application really fast by generating repetitive codes and providing some out of the box features to um, work rapidly on a web project. I really recommend you to see the previous videos to get an idea how to install Red Print App Builder on your machine very easily and the very basics of the software because in this video we're not going to go into the very basics we're going to try and show you the new cool features all right so let's jump in this screen right here is the default home page of Red Print App Builder you can change it any time of your development process later so this is just a placeholder for now. So you click on login and uh, you get the login screen for the back end. We have a demo username and password. We're going to use it to log into the system. So um, as you can see, this is the default red print view. Um, you're seeing this screen, this view, because the red print mode is enabled in the um, in the application so um, on on your installation on this env file you can set whether you're going to use red print version of the software or you're going to go and upload it into production so if you put it production put it into production just change the app env to production and uh, um, all the red print features they should be gone so this is the um, basic basically this is what you get when you upload the red print application on your uh, production server. Uh, as we mentioned before, this is because um, you don't want a code editor and code generator live in your um, production server for someone to mess with it. So yeah, it's always safe to hide all those features and keep the application light. So red print does it for you automatically when you change the app environment. Um, right now we're going to use the red print mode because we're going to show you the features of this software so we um, toggled it to red print and we get presented with all these tools red print provides out of the box the very first thing um, you notice the one um, of you who actually have seen the previous videos is a very new theme this is a bootstrap 4 based um, responsive theme for red print called unity and um, this is the um, sidebar so on the sidebar the first item we see on red print mode is a dashboard this dashboard is actually an incredibly fast and a very useful thing for for app developers so this is actually a live code editor uh, where you can see all your current files and edit them just like you would on sublime um, so or some other code editor of your choice. So let's see if we can make some changes using this code editor real quick. Let's change our home page code, for example. So the home page code is resources views home.blade.php. So let's load it. So that file is now loaded. Um, oh, just by the way, uh, you can change the theme of this editor just by clicking on this. So we have four. Uh, five themes built in uh, Courier, Xcode, Monokai, Twilight, and Tomorrow Night. I'm going to use Courier because I really like this theme. This is really clean, but yes, you know, sometimes you you want to use a dark theme when you're working deep in the night or something else. All right. Anyway, so let's um, let's actually see the changes we make live. So as you can see, it says, welcome to Red Print App Builder. It's nice to miss, meet you. All right. And 
Now we're going to change it to you rock. Okay, and save changes. Okay, it says the file is saved. We refresh and we see it says you rock. All right, that's pretty cool. So this means you can basically change any code on your um, software and you know um, don't have to use an external editor if you don't like or don't want to or you're in a situation where you can't use a code editor because um, you're in a makeshift environment makeshift computer for some reason anyway um, it, this editor also comes with some um, good features like uh, for example you're editing the user.php and you make a syntax error over here so you can see that the code editor actually understands that this is a PHP file and uh, says that there is a syntax error and you accidentally click on save changes but it's going to prevent that and say that you have syntax error in your code please fix them and try again All right that's pretty cool I think All right um, we fix the error and um, then actually it disabled the saving changes button so it won't let you save any file that has syntax errors in it all right cool next up we're going to see the builder itself if there is any change in it so basically the builder stays the same it has some crucial uh, fixes some bug fixes that um, that prevents you from generating erroneous code because you didn't notice something so it's mostly um, preventing users from creating uh, controllers and uh, CRUDs with typos like um, uh, when we put this uh, red print on live server we saw some of the users using weird um, this kind of um, this kind of garbages and trying to generate CRUDs which actually broke the um, application so we prevented that kind of um, things so now if you try to do that it says that model name contains invalid characters it should only contain letters and numbers okay that's great so that's one bug fix so we're going to show show the previous um, CRUD building we showed it previously again for reference and show how easy it is to create a CRUD using red print so we're going to create a CRUD called item so this is the model name so red print only wants the model name from you and the database fields so item will have a name description Uh, description is going to be medium text because we're going to write a lot of garbages in it anyway and then item will have SKU for those uh, who knows SKU is a store keeping unit for you know it's a kind of a unique reference number for products so we're going to make it unique and we're going to sh uh, index it for faster searching and we can search with this SKU same with name we can search with name and everything else looks fine we're going to index it for faster searching uh, so we have ID name description SK what else uh, we want an image okay image and uh, this is a file type image it, this is going to be nullable and description also is going to be nullable right um, and everything else okay we're not going to show the image on index and we're not going to show description on the index okay this looks correct so this is a CRUD for item and it'll have database fields called ID name description SKU and image okay all looks good let's build and yay so it looks like red print is done generating the CRUD for you and also navigates you directly to that CRUD. Now let's try and create an item. So what item are we going to create? Um, item name, let's say 
apples. Okay, apples are our item. Apples are great for your health. Okay, cool. And a PPL something. Let's download a Apple images. Okay, we have nice images of Apple. Also have Apple logo. Wow. Okay. Anyway, uh, view image and let's save it um, on our desktop and upload that image here. Okay, that looks cool. So we're creating a Apple as an item on our system, and this this is it. I mean, you can edit this Apple again. Say so we're not going to say it Apple and save. You can search them by name or SKU. So APPL. Okay, search. So you can search them using name or SKU like we mentioned. You can delete them if you wanted. So let's delete. We have deleted. Anyway, so that is cool. Um, we previously showed how you can actually create relationships between two um, two um, models. So we're going to show that real quick as well. Uh, let's build another model that is going to okay items has many colors let's for example so one item can has a lot of colors let's see if we can do that so we're going to create a new model called color that is going to contain colors uh, let's enable soft delete for it so ID and name that's it so let's create this model okay now we have two crads one for color and one for items. Let's create our apple again so that we can actually know. Let's create some colors. So there are two types of uh, apples in terms of color. One is red and the other is for example green apples. Okay. Cool. Now uh, we're going to create a relationship between items and colors and see how they cooperate with each other. Okay, before doing that, let's let's um, have a look at some of the codes that are generated by the code builder. Previously, we had to go to the uh, code editors to see that, but now we can do that ourselves. So, for example, we can see that we have now three models, color, item, and user, which was a built-in model. Let's see how color looks. Okay, this is the code of the colors model, as you can see and this is the items and then it created some views here backend items right okay and it created controllers like backend colors controller like so you can see that the code is completely PSR4 standard. Um, you're going to love it, I bet. Anyway, <clears throat> and also it created the migrations that we need. Um, as you can see, this is pretty standard Laravel code. Nothing uh, fancy about it, but it is clean and um, standardized. Anyway, so um, we were building a relationship between item and colors. So item has many colors that is the relationship we wanted to build so go to new relation select item has many you can choose the other ones as well item has many color so that looks about correct we cl click on build relationship and it says the relationship is built successfully and as you can see item has many color Defined key being color ID and the local key being ID. Great. So how does that affect um, the code? Let's see. So if we go to our item, now you can see that there is a new method created by Redprint called colors. Public function colors return this has many app color class. So that's really cool. Then we have um, user. And on color, okay, 
that's that's cool but not only that now when you go on to creating a color it it asks you for an item we don't have any item so let's create an item we'll create recreate that apple apple again um, apple apples are great for your health previously deleted this so create it again okay great by the way you can also um, OSKU is required okay I missed that so if you made a validation error it's going to show up just like this anyway so um, just by the way you can make um, items soft deletable and if you do that you'll you know now if it will because colors have soft delete enabled you can see that you now have two different options one is to restore this green apple the other is to permanently delete it and anyway, we're going to restore it for now so um, when you go to new you can see that now you have the drop down apple in it anyway you can also create reverse relationship like colors has many items so vice versa so we just tried to show you how you can create relationships and uh, crowds using red print app builder oh and another very exciting feature of um, red print app builder version 1.38 is you, you can now use namespaces for example if we want to create another model called um, item but on a oh um, another uh, model on a different namespace for example fruit slash product so this is our new namespace we're going to create the product model but on fruit namespace let's see what that does so we'll just uh, do it real quick we're not going to detail or other fields just to show an example so we want to create the product model under fruit namespace so this is how you write it let's click on build and done now this products um, CRUD is this product model and the controllers and everything is actually under a new namespace called fruit let's see if that indeed is the case so on model so let's see you see backend fruit the product controller is under a new namespace called backend slash fruit um, and as you can see the product model also is under app slash fruit namespace I'm going to show the file structure real quick so you're 100% sure of the um, code pattern here so you can see under app we now have a new directory called fruit and the product um, is actually under that namespace so that's pretty cool so this is one of the uh, great utility that um, red print app builder added um, is it allows you to create crowds under different namespaces great now we're going to show some real uh, nice features of red print one of them being you can change the theme of the whole application from config so on config if you go to red print unity which is a theme you can change the theme to purple for example we now support two different themes if you switch on the purple you're going to see a completely new theme on red print so and of course you have the blue theme to use anytime okay that's one other cool feature what else what else okay um, so the role permission manager inside red print which allows you to create and edit roles create users and assign them roles and everything but what if you don't want these features on your production you can do that um, you can just go to permissible 
and say enable routes to false and this as well to false so let's see what that does okay now this is gone um, like you said now the user and role management routes and items are gone if you want them back you just toggle them to true so enable routes and enable user management routes this are the two variables you need to change on your permissible config and that's all if you enable them you now have the permissible features called roles and users and you can disable them for your production if you want to or in case you want to build those functionalities yourself so that's it guys please let let us know if you want something new on red print and what you expect from red print in the future and we'll try our best to make red print the best um, level based app builder out there thank you very much for watching